Please welcome Ms. Taylor Pye. Oh, thank you. Well, I, uh, Randy told me what his favorite song of mine was before I got here tonight, so. All right, here we go, anyway. Randy said, that's my favorite pie song, so I thought we might as well just do it first then. And then I'll be in your good graces the rest of the evening. I right? shall. I want to be a gypsy. I want to travel in a caravan. I want a dark-haired, handsome, blue-eyed man. I want to be a gypsy. I'm a wanderer, heart and soul. Wish I could ride the wind. Sail away on a golden moon down a road that has no end. Is my home. I want to be a gypsy. I want to travel in a caravan. I want a dark haired, handsome, blue eyed man. I want to be a gypsy. I want to be a gypsy. I want to feel those wheels go round and dance to a gypsy sound. I want to be a gypsy take a break now and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not so. so tell us about where that song came from I want to know a little bit about that it's a song I wrote with Alan Reynolds my buddy and I'm in Massachusetts at the time and I was coming back and forth into Nashville one month uh, every six months and writing with Dickie Lee who wrote who had that great hit patches, patches. Mm -hmm. but the thing that was really impressive about Dickie was that Dickie's also the one who wrote she thinks I still oh, yes. care, oh, yeah. which is where he still gets his retirement fund coming in <laughs> on a great basis, you know. But I love Dickie, and I loved Alan. They're all, we're old buddies, and, and he and I wrote Full Grown Fool about that time, too. And I don't know, we'd just sit around and look for things. He was, doing, he was playing for his little four-string guitar, and we'd look for a groove and a feel. And I always loved writing with Reynolds because he, he could do choruses and have hooks. And that was never my forte for a long time because I could think of the story. But how do you make that all come into the thing that makes down. people start kind of patting their foot and wanting to sing along? There's yeah. a real gift to that. And he was, he was a master of that. So Gypsy was something that we collaborated on. I love that song. I like that song, too. Awesome. Feel-wise made me uh, think of one... Um, this was actually a chastising. I wrote this originally as a chastisement with a lady that I was dating or I wasn't dating. <laughs> I guess that's when you start chastising really a lot is when you're not dating anymore. 
when I wrote it, I wrote it strictly in that vein. It was, you know, you're never going to have another person like me. You know, it's that kind of a deal, you know. And, and so that was going to be true, whether it was good or bad. So I set this song up on the shelf uh, for a few months and then got to thinking about it and um, realized that there was, there was a song there. And it's called You'll Never Have Another Lover. You'll never have another lover Who can do what I can do Who will take the time to please you to Touch you with a love so true You'll never have another lover Make it good when you are blue Take away your trepidations Focus totally on you No other lover No other lover You'll never have another lover Love you through eternity When you wake up every morning You'll be looking right at me You'll never have another lover Make it good when you are blue Take away your trepidations Focus totally on you No other lover never need that other lover I ain't going anywhere I'll always be beside you bringing you my lover's prayer you'll never have another lover make love so tenderly hold you through the night and kiss you till the morning comes to be No other lover No other lover No other lover Thank you so much. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Um, yeah, just, yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Get, get stuff out of your system. It does. I mean, that's part of writing, yeah. isn't yeah. it? We it could really probably do a whole bunch of those. I'm thinking of one right now with the, with the Mando, you know, and, and I, I really love love the fact that when, when I lived in Corpus Christi, I, I dated a <clears throat> fella in, who was in college, and I was still in high school, and I, and he was part of the Kiwanis group, and they helped put on the hoot nannies that the Pozo Seco singers were. I was just really crazy about this guy. I used to th the only guy I ever knew that you know, even though he was he was an older classman and everything. I thought we'd have beautiful kids together and all that. You know? <laughs> I never ever thought that about any guy after before or after that. But with this guy, I really did. Well, I was in North Carolina, actually just across the border in North Tennessee, above Knoxville. 
at a place which is like a town that the Corps of Engineers built. So it's its own little community thing. And they were doing an outdoor on the mall kind of grassy knoll thing. And they asked me to come and do a concert. So I did. And a guy comes up, and I'm sitting there waiting to go on. And he has he's kind of tall, and he's kind of big, and he's got his hat kind of askew, you know. And he kind of looks like I'm thinking like so... Like, are you like a nut job, or are you like, are you like, okay, are you gonna hurt me or what? You know. And uh, suddenly, I was sitting with some friends, and he comes over and he gets down on one knee, and right in my face, and he goes, "Do you know who I am?" And I go like, "Ah!" And suddenly, I recognize that little snaggle tooth in the front of his head, and I said, "Ed," and he went, and. Ed really broke my heart badly. Oh. It was over when he broke up with me. He came by my house. To, the only thing he wanted was his 8 by 11 picture <laughs> that he had given me. From So I said, well, Ed. Uh, well, Ed, there you are. Ah. <laughs> uh. And then I had to go on stage, so I said, maybe I'll see you later. And so I went on stage and I said, I want to open tonight with a special song for someone I haven't seen in a long time that I just saw, and I just want to dedicate this song to them, and that's why I'm going to sing it first, and here it is. Someday you say I'm sorry I let it slip away Someday When it's too late Like a back that is turned Or a door that is closed I hardly know you these days And like a stream that's run dry Without love I'll die I can't keep living this way But someday Sorry, I let it slip away someday. Someday you want me back when it's too late. Yeah. Well, I gave you my heart. I gave you. I gave you my love for so long Now my heart breaks in two Over my needing you And somehow I've got to move on But someday you'll say I'm sorry I let it slip away Someday, someday When it's too late Someday You'll say I'm sorry I let it slip away Someday Someday You want me back When it's too I didn't hear someday as being the real key to that song. I heard no way being the key to that song. Oh, man. Let's do uh, something geographical. Let's do a song about Mississippi women. Yeah. We have a friend named Mary Woods here in Waxahachie. Mary's from Mississippi. She's a realtor here in town. And after a, a kind of a brutal divorce and going back and going to a high school reunion in Gaucher, Mississippi last year, she kind of rekindled a relationship with an old flame from high school. And it was going real good every time I'd see Mary for weeks. It was like, Tommy this, you know, Tommy that. Went down to Gaucher and went out, and it was great. And he came up here. And then one day she came over here, and she was sitting with Helen and I. She said, you know, 
a little concerned about Tommy. I said, you know, what's the deal? You know, everything's going great. You know, she said, like, he's wanting to move in with me. You know, he's like wanting to move up here and like he's taking this thing just like real serious. You know, she said, I got to I got to I've really just got to. And she was doing this. and I, I said, you know, brush him away. And she said, yeah, brush it away. And I said, yeah, that's the way you Mississippi women are. So. I can't go back to Pascagoula. Women there, they blow right through you like a hurricane Again and again And I can't go back to Tupelo Women there, they talk real slow With the southern drawl The way they say y'all From Greenville to Gulfport From Vicksburg to Gaucher That was a good harmonica. Thank you for playing harmonica. Well, uh, thanks for just letting me get oh, up here and just mess around. I'm trying to get my chops back on this thing. I used to play it, but I never played it very good. I liked what I heard. Y'all didn't mind that, yeah. did you? Yeah. 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 I'm still searching around on here, you know, but I remember as a kid, my grandmother played one, and she'd walk around in the garden going... And, and I listened to it, and I'd say, Mamma, how would you learn how to play? And she said, I don't know. I just picked it up one day. So one day when she went looking, I picked it up, and I said, no, nah, you're right. It just plays itself. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, isn't life just always better with a little pie in it? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Oh, thank you. It's so good to be back here, right? I miss Lurleen tonight, yeah. so I'm thinking about her. Yeah, I'm going to send God that her. out to her. She had a stroke uh, not too long ago, and she's been here at every show that I've had. Yeah, yeah. 
even here. the even this yeah. uh, radio show down. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. all of them mm-hmm. i mean she was here when it was just us yes <laughs> Us and me and Randy and Helen early, <laughs> but she was here, doggone it. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she was out there because she is a staunch supporter of live music. Hallelujah! And all of you guys are too. Thank you. Yeah, and thank y'all for coming. We appreciate it. Are musicians yourselves, so you know how important that is. Uh, live music is really special, and the little venue i have a house concert thing at, over in tennessee that i do and over there we it's so small and the room is so live it's an old 1890s victorian house and i just stripped it down to the original walls that were there so it's some tongue and groove poplar and some that's beaded and it's beaded poplar on the ceilings and they're 11 and a half feet and i put a little stage over in the corner and knocked the wall out in the middle and the sound in that room is uh just amazing i mean it's just acoustically it's an amazing sight. you don't need a microphone but i found that to have people there they have to understand that you know they have to really understand you're not going to have a microphone so that means you have to look out at an audience and talk to them and play because they're going to hear you in here but you do have to direct yourself in that rather than just going on some guys do get on right <laughs> this is my little open tuning open tuning d guitar and i've Changed all of my strings, and I didn't check these earlier. Shouldn't take too long with this magic tuner. Your either. snark. My snark. The guys up in Rochester, New York last year, when I was up there, I was playing with a group of musicians that were kind enough to book gigs and include me in them so that they could throw money at me and pay for my gas. And we had a grand time. Jim Clare, you know, you've probably met him on Facebook. He's probably here. On Facebook? Uh-huh, yeah. He's up in the Rochester, and I, he gave me this snark. I'd never seen one. It's like having R2-D2 kind of mm. hanging off the end of it. <laughs> I have a little, like, volume button. It's very high tech. Here we go. Either there or you're having an intimate relationship with that. <laughs> <the player. laughs> Across the sky. 
sky I just need some time <laughs> And a little room and Someday I'll go walking On the moon Someday I'll go walking On the moon one of my personal favorites i like it well i'm gonna do y'all a new one and i gotta tell you before um, um don't look at me like that helen i'm not even gonna <laughs> i'm not even gonna look at you during this song okay <laughs> my mom very important part of my life and when you're 11 years old and your mom walks in one day and she says in 1961 i'm gonna be the first woman to run for the united states senate in the state of texas for an old 10 11 year old boy that made for a very interesting year. My mom was the first woman to run for the United States Senate in Texas. She did run for Lyndon Johnson's vacated uh, Senate seat, and she was beaten by John Tower. So I grew up around politics. Now, I'm a little out of place in the business that I'm in. Don't, don't start, Ann. Don't even look at me. <laughs> a lot of people looking at you, Randy. <laughs> and listening. The best way I can put it, being a conservative in, in the music business is like being a piano at a Church of Christ convention. <laughs> <laughs> but I is. This song, however, is apolitical, but it's political. It's not picking on one or the other because there's been disappointment in both parties lately especially well not just lately i've been alive for 62 years and it's for at least 62 years so uh this song kind of came to me hearing um, all the stuff been going on the last six months and and it really wasn't anything different than when my mom was running or it wasn't anything different than when eisenhower was running or, or kennedy was running or anything else they all the politicians pretty much said the same thing i was wondering what makes them run what makes them do this you know uh, and uh, keep doing it, yeah. And so, um, this is called But You Run. Hit and run, punch and hide, and try to get the best to the other side. Look over here, look over there, while people dig around in your affairs, you run. Kiss the babies, shake those hands Your life's a series of one night stands Hear all the hawkers who bought your ticket They called the shots, now you gotta fit in it But you run, and you run Promise this and promise that And make them think you're a real cool cat And feel their pain and play to their blues While you're walking around in thousand dollar shoes You run and you run You wear the red, the white and blue Surround yourself with yes men too Vote for me Save our nation before this train can leave the station you run. And you run. And make your deals and kiss that ass. And don't you hail when you smoke that grass. And twist the words and blur the facts. And pee on their leg while you pat them on the back. You run. you think you gotta prove man it looks
Looks like fools are leading fools But you run But you run But you run But you run I'll find another song with a good riff. So, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with that excess. I like that. That's a recent right. one. I wouldn't want that job. No, getting there is that would be the worst part of the deal. So true. <laughs> Flashing lights, feel the wheels of the ambulance racing through the night. And he's not sure how he got here or where he's gonna go. But in his mind, he wants to be back on Mary Robin Road. So he prays. Lord, before you take my soul to heaven Before you open up those pearly gates to me Stop by Mary Robin Road Where her spirit's waiting patiently Cause she's all the ever after This old heart will ever need Aggravates the nurses, stubborn to the bone. But when he talks of sweet Ailey, he softens in his tongue. And he tells them old stories of days long ago when she made their house a happy home back on Mary Robin Road. Lord, before you take my soul to heaven Before you open up those pearly gates to me Stop by Mary Robin Road Where her spirit's waiting patiently Cause she's all the ever after The soul heart will ever need And he's lived too long without her Lover, friend, and wife And he's tired of every breath he breathes Without her in his life So he prays Lord, before you take my soul to heaven before you open up this pearly gate to me Stop by Mary Robin Road Where her spirit's waiting patiently Cause she's all the ever after The soul heart will ever need Aileen's all the ever after The soul heart will ever need Um, a real effort of someone who had written a poem about their uncle and my friend Bob <coughs> Allen passed away a couple of years ago sent me <coughs> an email and asked me if I would work on the lyric that she had and some that he had added and put some music to it so it was like a three people effort but at Uncle Roy's funeral they sang the song which was I thought very cool it's like one of those things where it's really not how many fans you have or 
how much money you've made at what you do. It's if you do something like write a song with people and it gets touches people in that way. That's what that's really what it's all about to me. It's like that's what we do it for. Well, yeah, I think if, if you can if you can write a love song that makes somebody reach over and touch the person they love or uh, hug just, them or whatever, you know. Just have that feel or something just personal yeah. to you. You have something and, and someone else feels it and they just know, thank you, you wrote that for me. I love that feeling. I thank you, I did. Have you ever written Absolutely. a song for somebody but didn't find out why you had written it until later? No. Do you have one of those? Happened to me, yeah. Oh. And uh, a number of years ago, back, I think it was in 98, it was one of those things that, how many writers were in here? Okay, you'll, get, you'll understand this. Let's start an association and collect news. <laughs> yes. Hey, there's a way to get some money. Pie for president. <laughs> yeah, pie for president there. <laughs> and, and this will go a totally different direction. I did actually in 98 go through a writer's block for almost the whole year. I've always found for me what works being a Christian is just to to get get with God and start talking to God. and I mean, he gave us our talent anyway. Talk to him about refining it a little bit. You know, hey, could you make that work again? And I think what he said to me in response to that was, write one for me. That's not the first time that had happened to me because when I wanted to be a, learn to be a songwriter, I actually prayed about it because <laughs> when I wanted to sing, I went to Harold. That's my dad back there, by the way, in the white church. Come play saxophone later. You guys stick around. <laughs> Fabulous saxophone player. But I went to Harold and said, hey, Harold, I, and this was back in the 60s. And I said, I think I want to sing. And he looked at me and he said, I think you need to like get in prayer. <laughs> right? Am I lying, Harold? No, no. <laughs> And Harold was not lying for two reasons. One, I couldn't sing. And number two, he wanted me to get in prayer. So there's two <laughs> reasons. So I found that over the years when I did get in prayer, and uh, he did open up talents. He opened up songwriting to me that way and singing to me that way. In 1998, I, when God touched me to write this song, I think he always knew that I had a place for the Apostle Peter in my heart because of just who he was, how human he was, how much he was like all of us. And, you know, there's nothing he couldn't do. There's nothing, no mountain he couldn't climb. So I got to thinking about what it must have been like for him when he saw Jesus walking on water. So I wrote this song about that experience. And I can say that had I not written this song, this room wouldn't be here. This is emotional, so if I get emotional with this, forgive me. But one of the people that helped us build this room, his wife got saved because of this song. I found out why I wrote this song. And Andrew was talking to me When all of a sudden it happened A storm came from out of the night The wind and waves tossing us about We were fearing for our lives And just when we thought it was hopeless Jesus to the rescue again he made it calm in the bat of an eye, you know. The weather, it listened to him. You should have seen him walking. Should have seen him walking across the water. Should have seen him walking. Should have seen him walking across the water to me. Him, Lord, can I do that? And he just said, Come, my friend. The water, it seemed so solid as I focused on him. And I was doing all right for a while. Then I glanced around. I saw the storm and fearing again. You know, I started sinking down in the peril. touch of his hand put me up put me back in the boat again back with all of my friends should 
have seen him walking, y'all can say. Should have seen him walking across the water. Should have seen him walking. Should have seen him walking across the water to me. To me, it's very important that that was Peter, you know. It was all about Peter there sometimes, like it is about us. Seem to be the way of life, you know. That's just the way it is. When we take our eyes off the master, we get lost in our sin. But we've got an intercessor who loved us from the start. He saved us from our difficulties and he'll renew our heart. Should have seen him walking across the water. Should have seen him walking. Should have seen him walking across the water to me. And should have seen him walking. And you should have heard him talking. Thank you very much. It's got that trance, <laughs> trance going. One of those great two chord songs, yeah. Pi. We've talked about that yeah, before. I like those two chord yes, songs. We do. When you find that. Nice, yeah, really something. Mm-hmm. Let's do one more each, and let's take a break. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Well, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh yes, now this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, I will, I will This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Somebody take a verse, ready? I'm gonna let it shine Don't let Satan push you out I'm gonna let it shine One more Let's push it out I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Because this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Oh, oh, yo This little light of mine mm, I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine, let it shine, let it shine I'm gonna shine all over this whole wide world I'm gonna let it shine I'm gonna shine all over this whole wide world I'm gonna let it shine It ain't too big I'm gonna let it shine all over the world I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Take one, Randy. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I will, I will. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. got to sing on this because if they don't we're just gonna get up and leave you know. <laughs> no excuses on this one for everybody you be the man something happening here what it is ain't exactly clear there's a man with a gun over there telling me I got to beware Think it's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. 
Y'all can do a whole lot better than that. I know y'all can do better than that. Because if y'all do better than that, I'm going to change songs. There's battle lines are being drawn. Come on. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Young people speak in their minds. Getting so much resistance from behind. Please time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. That was better. You know what, Pine? Tell me better. When I look over my shoulder, ah. what do you think I see? Some other cat looking over his shoulder. And he's looking right back at me. And he's strange. Talk about Richard Gann now. So strange. You got to pick up every stitch. You got to pick up every stitch. Two rabbits running in the ditch. Why? I said, nah, 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 nah. Must be the season of the witch. Season of the witch. What a field day for the heat. Thousand people in the street. Singing songs and a carrying signs. Mostly say, hooray for our sad Say, yeah! Think it's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's go. You better stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's go. You better, you better stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. And we got one more verse on this show. I'd like for uh, us to, I got these neighbors I don't like, <laughs> and they sleep at this time of the night, and they, yeah, they stole my cat, so let's wake them up with this one. Ready? It's all about paranoia. Paranoia strikes deep, into your life it will creep. It starts when you're always afraid And step out of line, man comes, takes you away You better stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going, you better stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going, you better stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Yeah